Everybody's here today? If you're not here, say something. Having some te technical difficulties. questions before we get started? So the basic idea here is we'll kind of go over and discuss the practice midterm one and then you can ask, feel free, you know, ask questions. I'm going to be asking questions, kind of leading it, but this should be kind of a discussion section type study thing of getting you ready for Friday. So any questions before we start off? Yes? Does the format follow this test, like no multiple choice, no true false? No. Not necessarily. Um, for this one, more or less, yeah. So I guess I should state, um, I don't know, we can talk about uh, at the beginning questions I hate. So how many questions are going to be on the midterm are questions I hate getting. Because um, in this there's like four questions, but not really four because there's a lot of sub-questions. If there's one question on the exam, you can bet that it's going to be a very difficult question. If there's 100 questions on the exam, they're probably going to be easy. So ah, I just... I, I'm going to make it so it's reasonable, right? But it will test and make sure that you're uh, paying attention and up to all the concepts that we're talking about, right? And that you can actually apply these things and be able to think with regular expressions and context-free grammar. So uh, just in general, that, that kind of question, like what's, so uh, like number of questions, yeah. Um, format, I probably wouldn't do true or false here just because it's, we've covered some stuff that we can have some cool examples. Um, these will test you on things. Uh, yeah, any other? <coughs> so you have 50 minutes, no notes, no nothing, just pencil, pen, and that's it. Uh, there'll be this first set and follow sets here, so you don't have to, well, I'll put it this way. So if you're referring to this a lot when you're doing the exam, right? I mean, you probably should have studied this more so you kind of understand these rules, right? They're just for reference, just in case you kind of can go and check the rules to make sure you're applying them correctly. Any other questions before we get started? Yeah. So I was doing, uh, I was actually uh, with a study group studying for uh, this upcoming exam right there from the other section of the class. Mm -hmm. Expected to do is when they do their follow-up first sets, is to like write the the time when you process that specific character in the rule that you use. For our exam, are we going to expect our group to be expected to do that? Or what does that mean? So, in, oh, in oh, 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 write the rule? No. Yeah, so they're not doing tables like we learned in our class. They're doing like uh, exponents to show like how they process the. Yeah, it's just showing it. that you yeah, know yeah. which rule. So we're not one. expected to like necessarily put in put in the rule. Uh, to me, if you get if you get the right answer, you get the right answer. Yeah, right? So it doesn't matter how yeah. I don't care if you can look at it and just write it down. Oh, okay, uh, well. But I will tell you that that is not an effective strategy. <laughs> right, right, because right. when you make a mistake, then I just say that's wrong and you lost 20 points, right? Um, if no, you, I, yeah. The, so the reason I ask you the question is yeah. just because like I looked at their whole Different class. and it was all like a bunch of exponents and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I don't know if we should do that on the exam or not. So. No, you don't have to do that. But if it helps you, you can totally do it. Like right. I, I'll, I'll be able to read that. So. Totally fine. Cool. Anything else? Yeah, I mean, they're doing different homework assignments. They'll have different exams. I think they're slightly ahead of us, but that's fine. I don't, I'm not worried. Yeah. From like a code perspective, mm -hmm. if you're going to write out, if, when you write out code, do you care if it's like valid C or just can it be like just pseudo code? Uh, for this exam, you won't have to write out code. For the next ones, you will when we get into how to create a parser, a predictive parser based on first and follow sets. Um, 
that will be mostly pseudocode, but not it's nothing. It doesn't have. I'm not going to ding you if you miss like a semicolon or something. But if things aren't in the right order and you're doing things out of order, right? Then that's just straight. <coughs> so it's like C, like C Java, like pseudocode, basically. But yeah, we don't have to worry about that here. Any other questions? All right. And for this to not be super boring of just me doing a midterm, uh, we're going to do this together. All right, so problem one says consider the following regular expressions here, right? So we have seven regular expressions. Some of them are building on each other, right? So we have letter is A, B, C, or D. Uh, capital letter is capital A, capital B, capital C, capital D. Digit, four, five, six, seven. Uh, alpha is a letter or a digit concatenated with uh, digit star, concatenated with letter star. Um, so I hope and nobody was confused by this dot. It's just kind of hard to just read the period, so this is a concatenation operator. Um, if you have any questions, these are the type of questions I'm totally happy to answer during the exam, right? If you have a question about what is this symbol. Uh, if you have a question like, what am I supposed to do when there's a star here? That's not a question that I will answer. I'll just tell you to do your best. <laughs> um, it happens. So row is digit or letter followed by any combination of digit or letter, of capital letters, right? any number, zero or more digit or letters. Phi is letter star, any number of capital letters followed by a digit. Uh, w is a digit followed by a capital letter or a digit followed by any number of letters, of uh, lowercase letters. So one thing to look at, do we define what sigma is? Technically, by defining letter and digit and other letters we did. Yeah, so these are kind of, so all of these regular expressions, right, are written in terms of one, two, and three. Yep. Um, so we can use the, the uh, tokens here to basically say, okay, I know it's going to be either an A, B, C, or D, or capital A, capital B, capital C, capital D, or four, five, six, seven, right? So we don't actually have to, I mean, our alphabet could be bigger, but for these regular expressions, right, these are the only symbols we care about. If it's any other symbol, then it's definitely not going to match any of this regular expression. All right, so the question's asking us, right? So exam taking skills, right? Read the questions, read the questions carefully. Um, I actually personally, what I go through is I read every single question first. Uh, if there's anything that I can like immediately jot down an answer, I'll jot it down. But otherwise I go through, I read everything, and then I go back to the start. So then my brain starts kind of thinking about the last problem, even when I'm actively working on this first problem. So um, I don't know, technique that works for me. Okay, so it says, for each of the following, fill in the blank with uh, is an element of or is not an element of. Uh, recall that L of R of regular question R is the language of R. Right, so what is this asking? What's this asking us to do? Is A44 in the language of alpha? Yeah, so is the string capital A44 in the language described by the regular expression alpha or is it not? No. So that's what it's asking. Yes, that, that is what it's asking. So we have to do that. So how do we decide? <coughs> right, can we match this with alpha, right? It's saying, is there some combination here? It's also saying, if we try to generate every string, right, the language described by alpha is going to be either start with a letter or a digit. So it could be, let's say, A. It could be any number of digits, four, five. And then it could be zero or more of these characters, right? So this is obviously not just, this is just one example, right? This is an infinite set. It's going to go on and describe every possible string that alpha could generate. So the question this is asking is, is this string in that set? Yes. Yes. Why? Because it uses a single capital letter, which... Single capital letter? Matches here. It and uses then two digits, four, two four digits. which satisfies digit. And it uses the empty string, which satisfies capital letter star. Yeah. There we go, right. 
so this one to nothing, this one to nothing, all good there. And the empty string is just <coughs> assumed. Yes, yes, because you can concatenate it. If this goes to the empty string, um, if this goes to epsilon, right, letter star, and concatenating it with ever, whatever we came before it came is what came before. All right. So the string 47, uh, the language described by Rho. Yes. 47. So we first look here, it's either got to be a digit or a letter. Digit. We match up the digit. And then we say letter or digit star. Matches. Matches one case of a digit. And then we stop. Yes. So this is definitely in. 47, is it in the language described by phi? No. I have a digit here. Yeah, two digits. Two digits. Yeah, right. So this letter star clearly has to go to zero, right? Because there's no capital letters in here. Right? So that means the next thing is this digit. There's four matches this digit. Right? But there's no letter at the end of the string. Exactly. There's nothing here, right? There's nothing else to possibly match it. So there's no way the string four seven is in the language described by the regular expression P. Just P, right? You? Okay. You have to start with the letter, right? <coughs> uh, you have to. Yes. No. It doesn't have to start with the letter. It can be a single digit. Oh, epsilon. Never mind. Yeah. So it could be. Uh, it could be four, right? So is four in the language described by phi? Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, so this is definitely not. Okay. Seven four. Is that in the language described by rho? So I have the digit, or no, this is omega, sorry. Yeah. This is row. All right, digit seven matches. Then we go to the next character. Is it the next character a big letter, capital letter, or a digit? Yes. Yeah, it's a digit, so that matches. Epsilon. Uh, and there's eps this goes to epsilon, there's nothing more, so that matches. So exciting. A D A E no. is that in the language described by alpha? Yes. No. 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 Letter can't just. So I have a letter followed by a digit. Digit has to go to zero followed by any number of letters, right? This should be in it. So there's no E. There's no E. Which may have been why we did this. Yes. Right. So letter capital letter only matches the symbols A B capital A capital B capital C capital D. Tricky. Tricky indeed. Just seeing if you're paying attention. No. You can't please really you. So now I'm going to check for everyone, and maybe there won't be one. Or maybe there will, because I just said that. <laughs> so E is not in, E does not match capital letter. Right? It's not so in any of the languages. Looking at lowercase a, big A, uh, capital A, four, capital D, lowercase a, does that match rho? So let's clear this some more right here. So is it start with a digit or a capital letter? No. It's a lowercase lowercase letter. letter. Lowercase letter, yes. right? So every string that rho generates has to start with either a digit or a lowercase letter, right? So is this string in the language described by rho? No. Because no. the last letter is lowercase letter. Yeah. Exactly. And we can know just from looking at this very first character, right? So we know that all strings that row generates have either start with a digit or start with a lowercase letter, uh, which this is a lowercase letter. Yeah. All right. It's the Sorry. Last character I'm getting. Uh, got I'm getting ahead of myself. All right. So that matches the letter here. The letter here. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Then it says then we match any number of digits or capital letters. All right. So this capital letter. Yes. 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 The digit. Yes. Yes. Capital letter. Yes. 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 But that one. But this yeah. is no because that's a, that's a no. lowercase. Right, so it's not. So it's not in there. <coughs> Almost. All right. Phi. Does this match phi? No. Yes. You guys are going to fatten like 50% as a group. No. 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 All right. So we have letter star, right? So capital A, capital D, capital A, do those all match letter star? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, does four match? Yes. 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 Digit. And then. But then there's another seven. digit. There's, there's another digit. Like so nothing afterwards. Yeah, exactly. So it does not match, right? This seven does not match anything in this regular expression. Uh, okay, the language is described by omega. So a digit, <laughs> digit, letter or digit, letter, followed by lowercase letters. Yes, that's in it. Oh, poor dad. Oh. <laughs> um, right, so that's definitely in there. Right? Look good? Everybody agree? We just got 100% of the group. This part? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, what's the next part? What's the next part of this question asking us? To parse that. Not parse it. Tokenize it? Yes, tokenize it, like <laughs> it. Yeah. Remember, parsing is turning it into a tree. Part tree. Locally, it's parsing, but yeah, we want to be specific since we have uh, specific names for these things. Okay, so we call get token repeatedly until the end of input is reached. The sequence of token returned is the following, right? So assume longest prefix matching is used. So if you don't know what longest prefix matching, you should absolutely look that up. Um, and ties are broken in favor of tokens that appear first in this list. So let's think about what this question is asking. What am I supposed to write here on this line? The list of tokens. A list of tokens. Yes, the sequence of tokens, right? So what are tokens from these? All of those. The left-hand so left handed also. arrow. Yes, the left-hand side, right? So specifically, I don't want to see, you don't want any lowercase a's, uppercase a's, fours, fives, sixes, right? Those are not going to go in there. We only want to see these are, these are our tokens. <coughs> Okay. Let's do this because of screen issues. I'm gonna have to. I can't see all the regular expressions. I wish I could like move this stuff around. Um, Maybe like a screenshot tool. Yeah, I probably could. Ah, it's too much work. I don't think it's worth it. Right now. Not do it on the board and then write it in later. <laughs> so you want to double my work on this? <laughs> <laughs> In effect, means you'll get none of that. Leave so, the rules up there. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Uh, maybe. So, so, can somebody write what's the input, the string that we're tokenizing? Four, yeah. seven, Four, seven, eight, a, a, lowercase a, <coughs> capital D, capital A. Four, lowercase a, lowercase d. Too many d's. <coughs> what was it? Yeah. Okay. Too many d's. Change that second d to an a. Capital A. And remove the, the second capital D to a capital D. Capital d. <laughs> Copy these kind of down one at a time, right? So we have four for our string. So before we start, what has the potential to match? All of them, right? Any of them? Yeah. Do we have to move the table? Mm. In case it's showing your work. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So if you mess, because especially, particularly for doing this, if you mess up the first get token, right? And let's say you end up parsing all of this when really you should have only parsed the four and the seven. 
Uh, then that's going to throw off all the rest of your answer. So if you just drop an answer down here, it's going to be completely wrong from the start, right? Um, so at least the other way we can say, okay, we'll knock off some points for that first mistake. We can see that the second, like after you made that mistake, you were doing it correctly. So, um, but of course, if you mess up on all of them, it's also not good. How many points will that be worth? I, I don't know. I'm just thinking because like I have a harder time using the table. Like I can get the right answer. And we were just, we were just talking about that a little bit earlier. Can you though? <laughs> well, I mean, it's some, like sometimes I leave out a potential one or something. Is that going to be the <coughs> restart on the board? Um, yeah, I mean, you got it. Yeah, I mean, that's part of being. You know, I mean, it's a. To me, it's a good tool to help you make sure that you're doing it correctly, right? Because you're trying to, like, you have to think about all of these possible matches for all of this input and trying to be like, who is the last, the longest match? Uh, but to, doing it this way, right, you're only doing it one at a time. So to me, it's a lot easier to think about, okay, I'm going to just match four, right? So I know I'm going to say, okay, who matches four? Well, digit, right? Right, digit matches four. Um, especially if you have to backtrack or anything like that, like if you go farther, um, to me, it's like super, I, I don't know, I mean, it's, I've done it maybe a little bit more than you, but not that much, yeah. Are you, for this particular one, you're just grading it on the answer, so if it's right, you're not going to go look at our table. Correct. <coughs> but you're taking a gamble. I, I will, you will, okay, so for the question of how many points is it worth, I have no idea, I can't say now, but uh, it will be here, so you'll know exactly how many points every question is worth. So in case you want to do some weird uh, game theory thing while you're taking the test of like where do you spend your time, then you end up spending too much time doing that. And then you end up <laughs> yeah. Okay. We match four digit matches. Does any of the others match completely with the digit? Nope. No. Take it one by one, right? Because this is when we can get in trouble. So does um, so letter clearly doesn't match just before. Capital letter? No. Digit? Yes. Uh, in does alpha match? Yes. 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 Right. This is why it becomes important to go through these. Um, does row match? Yes. Yep. Yes. Uh, does omega match? How do we know if it matches? Or does it have to go? It has to go all the way to the end of the regular expression, right? Exactly. So it has the potential to match. Um, so now we have to do the potential. We're kind of doing this separately. Um, so does digit have the potential to match? No. No, right? We've gone to the end of this regular expression. If we parse any more, digit's definitely not going to match. Fee? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to add it to the left. Because I'm running out of room. <coughs> so now we want to think about the potential. So definitely not letter, not capital letter, not, not digit, right? Because it can't match any more of a digit. Um, what about alpha? Yes. Yeah, it has the potential, right? We matched this first digit, but we could match more digits and more letters after it, right? We don't know that we're actually done there. So this has the potential. Um, what about row? Yes. Yeah, also has the potential. And fee? No. No, right? Yeah, so fee definitely doesn't match, or doesn't have the potential to match. Uh, omega? Yes. Yes, right, still has the potential to match. So which one's the longest match, and how do I know? First digit. It says the first one. All right, so I have four things that are matching here, but specifically because of the rule here, right? Ties are broken in favor of tokens that appear first in the list, right? Which is the assumption we've been making from the start. So it'd be digit <coughs> one. Yep. All right, then we'll look at the string four seven. So. Which of these seven regular expressions do we compare against the string 4, 7? The ones with the potential list. Yeah, just these three, right? We actually don't even have to look at anything. So we look at alpha and we say, does alpha match 4, 7? Yes. yes. Digit, yes. digit, yeah, it matches. Uh, does row 
match four seven? Yes. Yeah. Uh, does Omega? <laughs> yes. Digit, digit. Uh, yeah, it does match. Good. And then all those, are also all those also have potential. This is a star. Uh, row is this is a star, and <coughs> Omega has a letter after it. So we have row. one digit, right? Because it's digits in a star, it could keep matching more digits or actually right. letters, right? So that's why we, it's in the potential. Yeah. So like but the, it's the lowercase letter. Yeah, but the next digit is the next A ah. lowercase. Oh, yeah. oh. So that's why you use it. Yeah, this is why you use the table, right? So You're not looking at this input right. string at all. Right. So we're just right. looking right now at 4, 7. Oh. This is the string that we're considering. So I just had a question of yeah. like the process that you're doing right now. So when you, for, when we first did the table in class, for the match column, we, you just put one of them. You didn't put like all of them, like you're doing it right now. Uh, I think before it only actually matched one, I believe. Well, so we put you, all of the match, like it matches all of these. I mean, in class I remember you saying for potential you put all of them, but then for the match you put the one that matches. Hmm. I mean, I guess we could do that. We kind of did that up here, right? So this is just, I'm being so, extra. So I'm asking like, what's the point of the match column? Because you're putting all of them pretty much, right? Well, I put all of them that match. I, so, okay, so you're putting the, you can put the one that matches, right? Uh, which would be the one higher up on this list, but I kind of want us to be complete so we go through and think about all of them, right? Um, so I'm putting all of them here. You can do it either way for these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just when you put the longest match, right, you got to know how to resolve these five, one, two, these four that match. Yeah. What's then the, so what are we looking at for the potential follow-up? The potential means... Starting with this string, right? Does the regular expression, does the first part of the regular expression match this? And could we match, if there are stuff after this, could we match this regular expression, right? So it's basically like a prefix. It's saying like, okay, is 4.7 a prefix in there? And could there be more, right? Match says, is 4.7, the string 4.7, exactly in the language described by this regular expression? Now let's say it has an eight hit and hit the end of the string, there is always more. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we don't know that yet. Because, and this is why we can do this without even looking at the input string, because we just operate just on this string here. Uh, and so this pr helps prevent you from trying to look forward and see what's going to happen, and who's going to be what potential. All right, so 4.7a now. So OK, who's the longest match? one in the list. <coughs> yeah, the one higher up on this list, which is four, or which is alpha. All right, four seven a. So does four seven a match alpha? Uh, no. 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 Doesn't match alpha. Um, we can do potential. Does it have the potential to match alpha? No. 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 Uh, is rho? Does rho match four seven little a? No. 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 Uh, 4, 7, no, little a. Omega? Yes. yes. Digit, digit, lowercase letter? Yep. Yeah, so omega matches, and it has the potential to match? Yes. So we do uh, omega 3. <coughs> 4, 7, a, a? Yes. Same. Same thing? Same thing. And it's omega, omega. Omega four. <coughs> so I can just say this was a problem that was an, on the actual midterm one last semester. Um, so the things that I'm telling you, like some people stop here and they're like, okay, this is the longest match, mm -hmm. right? Which completely messes up if you parse this thing, right? And you start parsing from here, it's going to be completely different. The, the little d is included. So a a d. Still Omega, right? Yeah. Does this match Omega? No. No. So nothing, nothing. And we say it's Omega 5, right? So we know this is going to be the 
first input that's parsed. You mean that minus that? Yes. It goes back. Very one. point. Yes. It goes back one once. Yeah. Uh, it goes to the five, right? So we take this five and we take from the input string. Uh, we go one, two, three, four, five, right? So these we we basically say are omega. Right. But down the line. Put the omega, not the five. So you put the tokens. Oh. All right. Uh, and just because I have weird space constraints, because the resolution here is terrible, and we want to look at these rules, uh, I'm just going to erase these. We're starting fresh with the energy. Yeah, we'll start basically as if we were right below this, um, and we'll start parsing from DA4. So we take a string D. So which have the potential to match uh, before we start? Letter. <laughs> everything. Everything has the potential. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, does letter, lowercase letter match? Nope. Does that have the potential to match? No. Uppercase letter match? Yes. Yep. <coughs> does it have the potential to match? No. 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 Uh, digit match? No. Alpha, does alpha match? Yes. Yes. Does it have the potential to match? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, does row match? No. No, because it has to start with a digit or letter and it has no potential. Um, does phi match? Yes. No. no. It doesn't match, right? Phi says it has to end in a digit, so it can't possibly match. But it has the potential to match because the prefix matches. All right. Uh, omega? No. No, doesn't match and has no potential to match. So just alpha and phi. And what's the longest match so far? questions about what we're doing or the process? Okay, the 
is string A. All. So we had to, so before, yeah, all of these are possibly valid, right? So does it match letter? Yeah. Yes. Does it have the potential to match letter? No. No, no. no right? It's at the end. It can only ever match that string. Uh, capital letter? No. no. Digit? No. Uh, alpha? No. 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 Row? Yes. Yes. yes potential. Right. Does it match? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. And it has potential. You've <laughs> got potential row. Uh, phi? No. 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 Uh, omega? No. No. No, right? It has to start with a digit. There's no possible way. Cool. Uh, okay, so what do I put as the longest match? Letter. Letter. A, B. Uh, so now we just have to look at row. So does this match row? No. Everybody no, see that? It does not. It does not match row. Does that have the potential to match row? No. No. No, right? So we have no matches, no potential. So what's the longest match so far? Letter one. Letter one. No. Right, so possible mistakes. Some people um, would return row here instead of letter, right, by not properly doing the, the ordering rule. Right, it's important to remember that all of these are possible tokens that we can return. So you've only eaten A and B, right? Ah, so what have I eaten here? A. A. Just A, right, because of this one. Right, so because letter doesn't match AB, right? It only matches lowercase a. So we know it goes like here. so far? Letter one. Alright. D4. So does D4 match row? Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, is it the longest match? Yep. Or, so it matches, does it have the potential to match? Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 Right. We don't actually know we're at the end of this string yet. Right? I mean, uh, so we know the longest match so far is row two. Right, we're basically now at D4 kind of end of string. There's nothing more here, so we stop, obviously, and we say, what's the longest match? It's row two. So this splits up into, I forgot what the other one was. B. B. Row. Cool, questions? Should be pretty simple, I mean, you'll have plenty of scratch papers, you don't have to worry about space too much, uh, so you can, There'll be three extra pages. All right. So when you hit the end of the string, it's just whatever you had. Yes, whatever the longest match is that matches to that end of the string. Right. So some things to check yourself too. I just forgot. Right. Um, unless we explicitly say <coughs> how you handle a not found token or something like that. Right. Like uh, I think yeah, I had somebody ask me like during the test, what do I do if there's not a token? And I don't know how to answer that question mm -hmm. without saying that, like, well, I probably wouldn't give you a question that doesn't match a token unless I specifically told you what to do if there's not a token that matches, right? So yeah, think about those things, too. <laughs> All right, what are we doing on time? Ooh, 10 minutes? All right. Can we jump to first and follow since we're long time? Sure. Yes, please. You want to do this one? This one's fun. Fun three. Yeah, I like that one. one. Okay. We can do that. So we have uh, this grammar. We'll just do first and follow, right? This thing. Um, so we have first. Uh, let's do start over here. S. So I want to 
Chicago, the first of S. Right? So what so I look at these two rules, right? And I see, okay, uh, the first of S here is gonna be the first of D, right? Add minus epsilon, add to the first of S, the first of D is empty, so I add nothing and I don't change anything. And I look at the next rule, I add the first of F minus epsilon to the first of S. That does nothing, so it remains as the empty set. And I look at D, right? And when I look at D, I only look at these three rules. Right? So I look at this first rule and I add, okay, the first of D is, oh, this little D, right? Whatever the first of little D is, the first of little D is the second containing D minus epsilon, add that to the second containing D. I say, do I go on? I go on if there's a um, if there's an epsilon in that, there's clearly not. This D adds the same thing as D, and this D is epsilon. I go to epsilon. E, right, I just look at this one. Basically the same thing as D. Yeah, so I add, from the first one I get little e, and from the next one I get epsilon. This f, little f, epsilon, uh, from G, I get D, G, epsilon. Right? Mm -hmm. Am I done? We're going to add the first of D to the first of S minus epsilon. So that gives us little d. And I say, is there an epsilon in there? Yes. 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 So we got to add, go to F, add the first of F minus epsilon to the first of E, which is lowercase f. Is there an epsilon in there? Yes. Yep. So then I go to the next one, add the first of S minus epsilon to the first of S, which is just F again. Right? And I say, is that... Um, is there an epsilon in there? Yes. So I add the first of lowercase g, which is lowercase g. Do I go on to capital G? No. No. All right. Wouldn't you also check yeah, the also second check. s rule? Yeah. Yes. Now I have to also check the other second s rule. All right. S goes to capital F, adds the F. Um, then we say, is there an epsilon in there? Yeah. So we go on to g and add the first of G minus epsilon, so that adds a D there, D and G. D is already there. D is also already there, so we would not write that again. Um, then we say, okay, we've reached the end of the string. Is there an epsilon in the first of all these symbols? Yes. Yep. Yes. yes, which means we have to add epsilon to S. Yes. And there's epsilon in all All right, D is not gonna change. No terminal. E is not gonna change, F is not gonna change, G is also not gonna change, right? The second rule, right, rule five says if there's an epsilon in the first sets of all of the right hand side symbols, then I add epsilon to the first of S. So I check, is there an epsilon in first of F? Yep. Is there an epsilon in first of G? Yep. yep. So then I add an epsilon. Yeah. Uh, uh, not because, because the first of this, uh, the first set of lowercase g <coughs> does not contain epsilon. That's why. It's an ending terminal. It's a terminal, yes. Uh, there is no epsilon in the first set of a terminal, right? Which means I can't add the first of little g to the first of s here. You can't get to Exactly. Um, and I could, uh, I'll leave this to you to do this one more time to see that it converges here. Um, I believe somebody checked, but I'm pretty sure it's going to converge here because these d, e, f, and g's don't change. But this is something that you should not assume on the test. You should just do it one more time just to make sure. All right. Okay. So I first apply this. What's the? What do I? Always add to the starting non-terminals follow set. End of file, dollar sign, yeah. I could even do that here if I wanted to, that's totally fine. But I'll just do it here because, yeah, again. Okay, uh, so I want to calculate S's follow sets. Where do I look in these rules? All of them. Where you have S on the right-hand side, right? That's the important thing. So you completely ignore this whole side. Right? 
we don't care at all. Well, we care Rule a little one. bit, but <laughs> for deciding right, we don't care at all. We just look here and we scan through and we see that there's no S's, right? Yep. Rule one. Right. So I say, okay, great. That's it. So now D, the first set of D. For the follow of D, sorry. Uh, so now I need to go through every single rule here and find where D appears. Right. So I look here. So I first say, is it the last rule here? Nope. nope. Are there epsilons in the first set of all the symbols from after D to the end of the rule? Nope. No, because of this G, right? And then I say, okay, then I add, uh, to the follow of D, I add the first of F minus epsilon. Right? So I'm going to say F. And then I say, is there an epsilon in the first of F? Yes. If so, then I add the first of the next symbol to, to D's follow set, right? Which is F again. And then I ask it one more time, right? Is there an epsilon in there? Yes. And then I add the first of lowercase g to the follow of D, right? First of lowercase g is g, right? By the first rule of first set. Is there an epsilon in the first of lowercase g? No. No, so I don't add the first of capital G. You don't add epsilon. Oh, sorry. Don't have to close it yet. OK, that's just this rule, right? Actually, that's just this occurrence of d, as we'll see. There's an important point to be made here. OK, then we look at this d, and we say, OK, is it the last? No. Yes. no. Is it the rightmost symbol? No. No. It has to be the rightmost symbol of the rule. Right? And we say, are there epsilons from this rule to the end of the rule? No. 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 So rule 2 and rule 3 don't apply. So we take D and we say, OK, then whatever's after it, we add the first of that minus epsilon to our follow set. Right? So the first of F is F. We add the F here. That's all good. Uh, and we can't go on anymore. There's no more symbols after that. Plus, there's no epsilon here in the first of lowercase f. So I look through my rules. There's no more Ds. So this is good. OK. Now E, right? We look for E here. We see it here. So we say, is it the, la is it the end? No. Nope. 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 Is there epsilons all the way from here to the end? No. Nope. Nope. Uh, is there an epsilon? Uh, so then we add the first of whatever symbol comes after it to our follow set. The first of whatever comes after it is G. Which is just G. Um, and then I can't go on anymore, so I stop. <coughs> so then I look at this rule, right? Here's an E. So I add, say, OK, is it the rightmost symbol of this rule? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I add the follow of E, the left-hand side, to the follow of E. Right. So I use the follow of E here, the last known value of follow of E, which is just empty set. Uh, so that doesn't change anything. There's nothing after it, so that doesn't change anything. OK. <laughs> follow set of F. This is where it becomes very tricky. This is the thing that messes up people. So we have to consider every instance of f in the rules, on, in the right-hand side rules, right? Which is what we were doing before, right? We would consider d here, d here, right? But here we have to consider f every place that it occurs. So we first of all. Yeah. So we need to make sure when we look at this f, right, we add, we say, OK, is it the rightmost? No. no. Is it the, um, is there epsilons in the first sets of all the things after us to the end of this rule? No. So then we add the first set of whatever comes after us minus epsilon to our follow set. Right? So we have to add the first of capital F minus epsilon. So we add F here. Uh, then we say, is there an epsilon in that? Yes. Yes. Then we add the first of the next symbol to the follow of epsilon, of the follow of F, right? which is G. Then we need to make so. Then we need to actually do the exact same process again with this f, right? So it's important that you do it both because if you just did it with this one f, you won't get f is in the follow of f, right? Because there's two f's after each other. Um, so if we do this here, we'll get the same thing. This will just add g, right? You can pretty much see this, so it doesn't actually change anything. Uh, so then we look at this rule and we say, okay, uh, so is it the rightmost? No. No. But is there epsilons in the first set of everything from it to the end of the rule? Yes. yes. Yeah. Right. So we add the follow of s to the follow of s. Right. So this question I think came up on the mailing list. Right. You should just use the last known value. Right. These these follow sets we're calculating. Right. They're never wrong. So we should take the last known value of whatever that is. Uh, so here we should add the dollar sign to here. Right. Um, 
then we add the first of capital G minus epsilon, right, to our follow set, uh, which is going to be D and G. Just D. Uh, just D, because G is already in there. Good. Um, and then that's it for there. There's no possible way to move on. I look for F, 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 F. Here I see an F. Is it the rightmost? Yes. Yes, so I add the follow set of F to the follow set of F, which doesn't change anything. Then for G, then we look for all instances of G, so I add the follow of S to the follow of G, right, which is end of file. Um, there's nothing after it, so I don't add anything there. The same thing here, I add the follow of S to the follow of G. Uh, G appears here, so I add the follow of G to the follow of G, right? never have epsilon in follow sets. Follow sets are only terminals and end of file. Uh, because the rule, and it, the rule says we always take out epsilon when we add it, but um, the type is we never have epsilon. Okay, so we can see, I don't think we've reached complete saturation. I think they changed one more time. But I can't really remember, and I'll let you work out I think they say the same. Uh, when there are two non-terminal apps, does it matter if we uh, consider the second one? Uh, yes. Uh, you have to consider both of them. It doesn't matter the order that you consider them in. You have to make sure. Just think about if it was like this, right? S goes to D, F, uh, A, uh, F, B, right? But if they are consecutive, we don't. Ah, you need to make sure you consider the first one, right? If you only consider the second one, then it's going to be a problem. Yeah? Shouldn't the follow of B also have the Shouldn't the follow of what? E. E have in? Yeah. Well, except E never reaches the end of S. So we never add the follow of S to E. But it's still the last, the rightmost. No, no. It's the rightmost symbol here, right? Right? So we add the follow of E to the follow of E. Right? You add the follow of the left-hand side rule to this rule. Like up here, for G, we add, because it's on the right-hand side of this rule, we add the follow of S to the follow of G. Right? If there was, uh, there was like a D here, right? we'd add the follow of G to the follow of D. Right? It's not anything special case to S. Cool. Well, yeah, I mean, you guys can go. I can do some of the rest of the... Uh, yeah, we can go over three real quick. If people need to leave, you can leave. If not, this will be recorded, and I'll just keep keep rolling. All right. So this problem says to, we want to design a regular expression called IP to match IPv4 addresses. Right. So then hopefully we have a description of what exactly an IPv4 address is, otherwise we have no way to do this. Right. Uh, so it says an IPv4 address is composed of four octets uh, separated by periods. And you probably have to look really carefully, but this is a slightly different font than the other period. <laughs> I thought about removing all the periods, then it was going to be weird. So, anyways, um, each octet is an integer between 0 and 255 inclusive, right? Uh, which means we include both 0 and 255 with no leading zeros, right? Just like our hex values, just like our numeric values, right? We don't want to capture leading zeros. Okay, so you're probably familiar with the IPv4 address 127.0.0.1. Are you familiar with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yes. Very good. Uh, actually, fun fact: it's the entire 127 subnet. So anything that starts with a 127 is also goes to your local host. Um, so yeah. Anyways, uh, cool. Neither here nor there, but interesting fact. Okay. A note in bold. Right. Yeah. After you go through this, I'll ask a question. Actually. Okay. Thanks for the note. <laughs> All right, uh, so, okay, so this is saying um, represent a regular expression that matches the symbol dot, right, a 
as slash slash dot so as not to confuse it with the regular expression concatenation operator, right? Because we already have the concatenation operator. You also do not have to use the concatenation operator if you do not choose to. But just for this, right, you should be, since I explicitly called it out here, this is what you should do to match the period, this is what you should do. Mathematically speaking, couldn't you also use a, a double a double bar? A double bar? Yeah, because I've what? seen that also be concatenation. Uh, oh, oh. I, I mean, or, mathematically speaking, it all depends on what you define as your symbol. Okay, so in this case, I've just seen that. I've just seen that mathematically. Uh, yeah, I think well. they use that in. I don't know exactly. But like, actually, on PHP, they use string concatenation as dot, which is incredibly annoying uh, when you come from another language. Okay, so let's kind of go to the end. I think this is actually one of those things we can actually write pretty easily uh, the end regular expression, right? So we can basically say, okay, what do we know IP is? An octet, a dot, an octet, a dot. Yeah. Octet, dot, octet. Octet is binary is zero, one. We know here because it says that we can, you know, so we know that this is not matching <coughs> octet, right? So we're going to have to actually define a regular expression called octet, right? But we can see that, hey, our final regular expression is actually pretty simple, right? As long as we can write a regular expression to match an octet, we can say, okay, it's an octet dot octet dot octet dot octet, right? And there's implicit, um, you know, is there one more dot at the end? No. Uh, yeah, like you can see, he, well, that's. <laughs> the four octets separated by periods. So this period over here, we're not separated octets. Yeah. Uh, can the middle values, for example, 127 <coughs> and 0 and 0, can both the zeros be anything between 0 to 255? Yes. yes. Yeah, right. Every octet is an integer between 0 and 255. But, the, but it can't start to be a 0, right? Of course you can. Right. You can't have this, zero, zero, right? You can't have uh, zero, one, zero, right? No leading zeros. Leading zeros would be like yeah, unnecessary zeros in this case, right? So how do we write this? So, okay, let's talk about what do we need to be careful of when we write this regular expression? Okay, making sure that making sure that there's no repeating zeros, right? That's one thing. Also what was the other thing? Also making sure that the number can't go over 255. Yeah, so it's really easy to write a regular expression that could match IP addresses, right? Where we don't want to we want to make sure we're writing our regular expression such that it doesn't match things that are not regular expressions. Right? Yeah. So to be able to write it, I'm going to ask if we have to write a set of digits between 1 and 255. Do we have to write all 255? <laughs> <laughs> I'd totally be fine if you did that. Is there a notation you would prefer that we would be able to use? Yeah. Brain. Complete this in 50 minutes. Yeah, you could do that. I'm totally, I, I, if you come across this and you're like, it's kind of like uh, when you're being interviewed, right, on a whiteboard question, right, your very first instinct should be, I'm going to do the stupid brute force approach. That's the, the stupid is kind of a bad term. It but works. it works. It's it's correct, right? It's if you write out every single number from zero to two fifty five in a regular expression, it's just not entirely. Efficient. I will absolutely give you a hundred percent of the points if that's how you define it. You also do dot dot dot. You don't have to. Oh no, you have to write everything. Heck yeah, <laughs> you can't just dot 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 your way out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, because there's a better way. That's the whole point: is to make you think about how to do this in a better way that doesn't require you writing out every single uh, two hundred fifty five characters, right? That's what I'm saying, but hey, if you want to do that, it is correct, so absolutely. So let's start with something that's not correct. So I'm probably going to need a helper function, or a helper regular expression, right? A digit. So, is 
this correct? No. no. So what's wrong with this? There's we two things You can have any number between 0 and 999. Right. What was it? Yeah, exactly. So we can have a number over 300 or 256, <laughs> right? If we allow 256, that's wrong. So this is from our description, right? Uh, 256.0.0.1, right, is not a valid IP address, and we specifically don't want to match that. Okay. So, think about it in terms of numbers. So what does digit match? Digit matches any of the first 10 digits that we could possibly do. Not digits. Yeah, numbers, right? 0 through 9, right? It matches 0 through 9, right? So if we think about, we want to match essentially the range 0 to 255, right? So this expression matches 0 to 9, yep. right? So let's, we can try to split this up into different ranges and write regular expressions that match different chunks of the ranges. But we have to be careful, right? Because we can't just say 0 to 255, right? Because we to, we're dealing with digits, right? Uh, so yeah, so somebody said we'll probably need a P digit, yep. right, which is the same thing but without the zero. So, so this matches zero through nine, so how can I write a regular expression to match maybe a next, the next range? P digit digit. What do you want to call that? Let's call it... Um, uh, tens. Four tens? It's called tens. That's, that's now 10 through 99. Right, so this is the range what? 10 through 99. 10 through 99. Right, so then can I just do 100s and do P digit, digit, digit? No, you can do, no. you can do one oh, digit. So I get into the problem, right? So then what do I do? 10s concatenated with. Well, there's no, two ways. Just do, just do hundreds and do one digit digit. Well, but the problem is then you could get uh, like 299. No. Zero or if you just do one digit digit, it's anything between 100 and 100. So we're going to do this? No. No, because then you can't get 100 for one zero. Right, this doesn't do 101, right? Because the 10 specific with this P digit, right, specifically doesn't allow us to do that. You could also do uh, 101 digit or 10s, but I think digit digits works just fine too. Yeah, I mean, this is a little cleaner, right? Yeah. So then what does this match? 100 through 199. Right, we're getting there. And we look at how much less we had to write out than 255. <laughs> 256 is that because you have to do zero through. So now what do I have to do, though? Can I just do the same thing and put a 2 here? No. No, right? Because then I'll match up to 299, which I don't want to do. So I think do uh, you have to create another sub-digit set that's only 0 through 5. 0 through 4. No, 0 through 5. Couldn't you, couldn't you do, like, wouldn't it be easier to define 0 by itself just by half that? Because you cannot have a big 0, right? Mm -hmm. So you, just, you can just define 0 by itself. And then for the hundreds, you can either have uh, a 1 or a 2, right? You can have 100 something or 200 something, right? For the hundreds. No, you're running with uh, But you can't, have, you can't match 256. Yeah. Exactly. So how are you going to write it so that it matches 199 but not 256? Exactly. So then you do. You do you do zero, two, first, second, and third, zero, okay? Two, mm -hmm. And one, then for zero, you just two, write it as a zero. Zero, four, zero equals zero. Two, nine. First equals one or two. No, so two second, two, five, you can equal five. three, four, five. And then third, it's six, seven, eight, nine. Five, so then if you want to write 199, I got you. you do first with any combination of third or second. And you can have any hundreds. I have to look at it. I don't know off the top of my head. I don't know about that any combination because the ors could mess it up. But we can keep going in this direction, right? I think we're pretty close. Yeah. So we have to do something with a 2, right? Yep. So we can do basically, what, 0, one, 1, 2, 3, and 4. 2, 3, and 4. 5, yeah. <coughs> right? Followed by a digit. Yep. And then you can also do 4, that, 0, 5. Ah, let's do another five. one. That's confusing. 
right? So this gets us 200 to 249? Correct. Oh, yeah, you can't just do five, can you? Bounce it. Yeah. Five. Yes, that's right. Okay. <laughs> no, no, not that the five went there, that the whole thing was correct. <laughs> and now that's 250 to 255, which now covers the whole range. Yeah. Yay. So now we can say that an octet is eight. A digit is a, a, a uh, digit, right? Digit or tens, tens, tons, or hun, alpha or beta, or uh, alpha or beta. Right. I don't think we wrote 255 characters, but <laughs> it'd be longer if you have digits too. So you have so to write. Yeah. Just to clarify, you said we couldn't do like. The dot 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 because it was. Just oh, it's cheating. That's not a regular expression. We don't have a. What's a, the regular expression <laughs> dot 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 operator mean? <laughs> Technically, well, like, you know, like it, it seems reasonable, like 4 dot 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 244, 255. No? It's a represent it's, a regular expression. It seems, right? it seems so also fair, like, or that's that could Design work. a regular expression. That's not a regular expression, right? A regular expression is finite. That's right. Can't we split this into three components? It has to be excited. In what sense? For example, the first we know will start. With either a one or a two, right? If we consider the case of a single zero as a different case, mm -hmm. it will start with either with one or a two, right? So that will be our first one. Then everything from zero to nine for the second one. No, because you can't. That would do two ninety nine, right? Yeah. So this is the problem: is if you just have a regular expression like uh, one or two, right, concatenated with sorry, 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 yeah. digit, digit, right? Yeah. Uh, so at the end of the day, if you have two ninety nine. You basically can't consider one and two the same because they don't, the things that come after it have to be different. So, so we can, for that specific case, we can do up uh, for, uh, you know, till 200, we can uh, take one case and put an or, right, and uh, combine it, concatenate it with the other one. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's what we did here. This is what we did. So we defined all the cases and then we concatenated it together all the, at the end. <coughs> so it's either got to be these things, right? That's cool, that's fun. I like that one. Can you go down? Yeah. I want to just create a very simple case. We'll create a much more simple case. Logical. So you recommend doing that instead of just writing out an action that feels like that? The purpose of the question is to get you thinking about how to design a regular expression, right? In the, I mean, ideally you want to write it in the most impact way possible that's as precise as you want it. But I'm, what I'm asking is like this, rather, for your intuition, like that, or just like, you like your You mean if you're going to write one thing called IP that's this whole thing of like ors and it's, that's going to be like multiple lines? I mean, I would say that that's probably not the way to be the most clear in your thoughts, right? <laughs> You know, if it's going to span more than like two lines, I would say, yeah, you want to like not, <laughs> not do that. Uh, but yeah, this is only one possible way, right? It's not all possible ways to write this. Right? Yeah. So on the problem, it's asking us to do first and follow. Mm -hmm. I've gone through this like three times. This is, I'm getting this for my follow set. And I just have a hard time thinking that it would be all of them for all of them. Why? Except for that. I don't know. Is it? I mean, I've gone through it three times, and if it's not right, I would like to know what I'm doing wrong, I guess. Uh, if you're applying all the rules correctly, uh, then it, you know, like, it could absolutely be the case that that happens. Like, there's okay. nothing inherent in the grammar that says it can't do that. Right. It just doesn't um, seem like a kind of homework problem, I guess, where it's like, okay, it's that one. Oh, same, same, same. All the way it's, it's not the answers, though. It's the steps you take to get there, right? And making yeah. sure that you make sure that you're applying all the rules. Well, yeah, so with the test on Friday, if I'm doing the steps wrong, I would like to know, basically. Yeah, so I mean, the best way to do that, right, is to go through these examples, right, yeah, and make sure that the steps yeah. you were following matched up here. And I, I mean, I did these last night, and this is what I got. Perfect. So. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. I mean, 
I guess. Yeah. For the leftmost derivation, mm -hmm. um, I think it's question guess it's one. Sure. Um, should I include a lepson when I'm writing it out, or can I just include what's going to remain at the end? Uh, you don't have to include it, but you can. Okay. It's either way. I mean, I, I don't. Either way is fine. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. How do you propose that we, um, for problem four, how do you propose that we go um, um, for problem four on the homework? How do you prefer, like, you say to show that our uh, regular expression is correct, to show examples of mm -hmm. strings that it accepts and strings that it doesn't accept. Yes. Yeah, so just like, uh, basically you should do something very similar to this first part here, right? That's like, look, here's a string that's in this regular expression. Here's a string that's also, like, you don't do all of it, right? But I want a few examples that show that so you're like, testing your regular expression in some sense. So, like, I gave two examples here. I said, like, this string, here's the string sort of broken up into parts, mm -hmm. here's the parts of the regular expression, mm -hmm. so it's like, that's BAB, which is right. the same as BEA, mm -hmm. one occurrence followed by right. um, a B. Good. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. here I just gave a description of, like, since this doesn't start with alternating A's and B's, then it's not accepted. Exactly. It's actually okay. just, uh, it's kind of like a self-check I put in there. So oh, okay. Because some people submitted hex expressions that match things that weren't hex <laughs> numbers, right? right? So it's like they, um, so yeah, so I want you to just look at it and, and show that like, okay, here's an example where it matches, okay. here's an example that it doesn't match. Right. And that is consistent with the description. Okay, I wasn't sure if that yeah. was like... So kind of like the same thing we did here of thinking about just, okay, 256001, we want it to not match, right? Right. Because it's really easy to write something that matches that and that. Mm -hmm. Right. So I didn't, I didn't know if there was like some... I didn't no, think there was nothing. some sort of like formal no, way no, that you no, would... No, 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 you're not like prove, you know. Right, yeah, I, was, I don't think so. Prove that it's correct. So, I'm like, I didn't notice until we did the practice mm -hmm. exam that it only asked for it. So on the homework, when it asked for just sequence of tokens, I actually did the validity. That's so fine. Am I gonna, not going to get docked? No, for that? no, 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 absolutely <laughs> okay. not. No, 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 that's the thing is like, if you do that on like problem one, it's totally fine. Right. Like, I can, as long as I can still bit, yeah. figure it out, but... Mm -hmm. If I have to dig a lot to be like, what are you trying to say here? Like, what answer do you actually have? Yeah. Uh, That's not good. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. You said you guys just show a couple examples. Like, is it matching? Is it matching? Yeah, just give me some strings. Like, I want you to think about what strings match, what strings don't match, right? I also so that way that you know that yeah. you're thinking like, about you're not just matching, right? Because that's the key thing. Is it's really just going to make it. And you write dot star, right? It will match everything, right? But that's not uh, the purpose. Yeah, that's not the purpose, right? You want to match just that. I don't understand what we're talking about. We're talking about problem four on the homework. On homework one. On what? Homework one. God, I Are we allowed to use, um, was that the last problem? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My Are we allowed to use braces? Like, with regex, you can do brace to... Oh, did you? No. You have to do regular expressions as we talk about them in class. You can't use different <laughs> operators. Yeah, it's All those braces it's are, of course, right? I mean, they're just another way to do a push. I guess. That's it's slightly more compact. It's nice to say oh, brace to comma. Brace oh, be like two or more. No, 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 absolutely not. Yeah, so this part says show that your regular expression is correct by showing strings that are in the language and strings that are not in the language. Right? So this means do the regular expression and then do a self check to make sure that you're matching things that are in the language and matching things that are not in the language. How many strings do you I didn't. Hmm? How come, like, but the game itself is very like you. I like their tears up. This is honestly, this is more of for your benefit because people submitted problem one or for homework one, they submitted um, stuff that didn't actually match. So. Uh, or it matched too many things. So this is, I want you to demonstrate that you thought about, okay, this, like you, it's like designing test cases for your homework, right? So like design the test cases that should match and the test cases that don't match. I didn't get that at all, so I couldn't figure it out. We should play a lot of So I'll give it another shot and then I can email you my response and you can tell me if I did it right. Well, it's not even fun. See, now you're talking about me. And it just uh, I mean, silly out of 
context. Yeah, nerds. or you could come into office hours. Nerds. Nerds. Nothing but your wall. You're all nerds. So, uh, if I have hours, oh, Archie sounds like made up I don't know my office hours. It sounds like you're talking about some crazy universe. 5.30. You're all just a bunch of nerds. Nerds. Three to four. Nerds. Then that's good. Then I'll be there. Yeah, it's on my calendar. I just don't, I don't have it memorized. I just show up. And then running away. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, it says Thursday, 3 to 4. Subtle choices. Didn't one of these questions say make a parse tree? Yes. This one. Find a string with two different parse trees and draw two parse trees. The draw the string. The string G is a really good one. Huh? The, the string G alone is a really good reason. There's actually a lot of, yeah, there's a couple different uh, examples, which is kind of funny because. Can you do that? It could be any way. Can I do that? Yeah, because I don't know. Uh, I have to leave in a few minutes. Oh, okay. Uh, but, yeah. I mean, it's basically. Okay. It's good escapes. You have to figure out, the idea is you have to figure out, um, so you're showing essentially that this grammar is ambiguous, right, by showing that there's two different parse trees for the same string. Okay. Um, so always we start with S, right? It has to start with S, always starts with S, yeah. Um, so basically you're gonna have two trees that both start with S and then have the same leaves, but not but they can't be the exact same tree, right? Okay, I see. So you can do two trees for the yeah. Multiple right answers. Like if yes. there's if there's three different routes, you can put two of the three. Okay. Yeah. But this is this is I really like these kind of questions because it actually challenges you to think about. You have to understand the grammar, see what it does, and try different things. It's not just like a do first or follow sense. So hit hit. You like these kind of questions? Same. Well, I, it's actually more just like telling you guys why we ask these questions, so you don't think I'm like this arbitrary horrible person. Maybe. <laughs> E, F, yeah, so this could go uh, epsilon, F. epsilon, epsilon, <laughs> epsilon, right? Yeah, that's that's one tree. <laughs> that would be one tree, and then, oh, so the important point though, so I have to choose this one. Wait, how does G work? Hmm? We have to include G here. No, you're good. Oh, because oh, I choose the other one, duh. So that one I really, okay, do you guys like it better like this where there's two S's? Or do you like it better with the bar? When I first I, saw that, I was like, that's really yeah. cool. I think it's I'm, easier I'm to do the first R. sets that way, but it's easier to understand it when it's the other way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. It's easier to do the first sets that way. It's just when you first saw it, we're more used to the other way. With the, the bar. When we saw this first, we probably like this I'm more. like, how, wow, there's a lot yeah, of Yeah, I didn't know what this was. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh my god. Either one way or the other way. So here we get the string G. Both of the string G. I like this Okay. Okay, two different parse trees, same <laughs> string. That's really easy. So a way to go about that, could you maybe use my like parse tree for that's one? Right. Right. Like, right. You want to like tackle the question? Could you maybe just make a parse tree, see oh, what you get? No, we're talking, he's talking about the octet. But yeah, the problem is it gets tricky, right? Because for every possible rule combination, there's a different combination you can choose. I would choose to try to get a string first. Like, I would try to look for a string first and see if I can make it to it. Just try to find the most simple string. I think it's this task. I have to go. I have to go.